This episode wraps up three weeks of blood, sweat, and tears getting down and dirty in Marina Tropical, Dominican Republic to get our girl Don Quixote ready to sail again. The day finally arrived when the bulk of the boat jobs were finished and she was ready to be hoisted off her props onto a trailer and back in the water where she belonged. All things going well, we'd even have just enough time for a diesel mechanic who was an expert in our engine to have a look at her before he flew out to Florida. But time was running out. Nothing we can do about it now, it's out of our control. Turns out they put the props where the, what would you call them, the pads have to go to, yep. to for the hydraulic trailer. So the idea is to take the props off and then once the um, the pads are on, then you can sand and, and put the anti-foul on where those the props were, but that couldn't happen. So literally got about a minute to dry, so. Yep. Sounded like a crack. Sound like cracking fiberglass, and then he said, "Stop, stop!" And now they've ran off and grabbed okay, a couple of more props. We feel sick. We heard two big cracks, and we don't know what it was. They propped up the boat. We don't know. so far. Bilge is dry and Diesel Don has arrived to work his magic. Here's the feet of a legend. So the Don's in his element here. He's balls deep in a 4108 and he loves that. Nothing more. If you're not bleeding It's hot. Front, I, you know, you should be uh, you should be fanning me right now but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He has high demands this guy. Yeah. We love him. And if you're not bleeding, you're not going hard enough right? That's right. I'm bleeding. He's bleeding. An extra 50 for the blood, yeah, right out. <laughs> He's good. That is a beautiful sound, that one. I went over just to get the boys some lunch because it was about two o'clock and beef hadn't even eaten. We hadn't eaten at all yet today. And uh, I came back about less than an hour later and the engine is running. Not only running, she's purring. She's turning over first go. Turns out it was just a little bit of a timing issue. And to think that the guys at Turks and Caicos were telling us the engine was, you know, finished and that we should chuck her out and replace her and get a new one. According to Diesel Dawn, the only thing wrong with the Perkins 4108 engine is that they don't make them anymore. Best engine they ever put in sailboats, he reckons. So that is hugely awesome. This girl, she's got a working engine again. Woo! Naughty Nook lives on! The Naughty back. Nook lives on! As long as our bulkheads aren't cracked. <laughs> so what, what was the big problem, Dawn? What do you reckon? Well, just was uh, timing was off from when the gear was put on the uh, 
injection pump drive. It was uh, off time. Decided to give it a little tweaking. Pulled out the magic wrench, fix it. Give it a bit of love. Yeah. And then we went ahead and adjusted the valves, which needed adjusting. And uh, other than that, we're good. I believe you said you were tickled pink with yourself yesterday. Well, I'm, I was full of myself. <laughs> anytime, anytime I fix it, I'm always, uh, my chest puffs up, so. Well, we were pretty stressed about this for a few weeks because you're leaving tonight on an airplane back for Florida. And within an hour, you had her up and running and kicking over first go. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're stoked. Thank you, Don. Well, I, couldn't yeah, done, dog. I couldn't have done it for a nicer couple. Oh, oh come on now. No, He's just buttering up because no, the camera's no, rolling. No, no, <laughs> no. Thanks, Don. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, thanks, sure buddy. I haven't seen Beef want to kiss any, any man as much yeah, as he yeah, wants yeah, to yeah, kiss back you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our engine purring, we rejoined the fleet of sailboats in the Luperon Harbor. Though we mightn't have slept so soundly that night had we known that our next challenge was just around the corner. Oh, Beef, tell us what's happened and how we got to this point. Whoo! If it ain't one thing, it's another. I'll tell you what. Struggling here. So, engine's going good. Diesel Don fixed it, all good. We were pretty much planning to leave on Monday. But I noticed that when I'd turn the key to start the engine, I'd get a little flat spot and it'd be like, I'd, usually when you bump it, it should just start. And it was like, nothing, nothing, boom, 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 it would start. And then boom, 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 start, boom, 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 start, nothing, nothing. So first thing I did was clean all the terminals, put it all back together, it was working most times. This morning though, I went to start it a couple of times and it had a little flat spot, it was missing again and not working properly, so I cleaned the terminals up a little better, put it all back together and it wasn't working that great. Anyway, when I was tightening up one of the terminals, are you filming my chest right now? No. When I was tightening one of the terminals, I had a cr it cracked the outside of the solenoid. No is, way. Yes we'll way. We'll show you in a second. Okay, so what does that mean? We can't start the engine. No, I mean, if I put it back together, I probably could start it, but there's a problem that needs to be fixed. I think the starter motor needs to get rebuilt. It's probably, there's carbon brushes that go onto it, and there's like a commutator in the middle, and they get dirty, they need to be cleaned or overhauled. But to do that, we're going to have to take the starter motor out, to, and then take it to port platter Hopefully, someone can fix it. I tighten this up, I tighten it too much. Well, I had to tighten. Yeah. It's a long story. Okay. Basically... This nut usually sits about there, but as you can see, it's stripped, the thread is stripped. So I had to take this nut off, put a washer there, but by doing that there was nothing I could lock, I couldn't lock this from spinning, so when mm. I tightened it there was no resistance. So realistically this nut, it's called a stud, it's not a bolt, it's just like a thread. This stud needs to be replaced with a new one, um, and I was trying to make it work by doing what I could but in the process of trying to make it work it cracked so yeah hey it happens you do your best I do my I did my best and I, f I kind of failed you haven't failed me never do we're a team last night yesterday late afternoon actually beef met an Aussie guy named Brian and he sailed around the world and he knows Perkins 4108s really well so I've sent beef packing this morning he's just headed off over to his boat with a cup of tea a GoPro a bottle of water and the starter motor so we'll see what he comes back with in a couple of hours but we may have lacked out so we're here on board a fellow Aussie's boat Swan Brian Brian is his name this is Leah Young she, she's the boss of the boat she runs the show around here and check out check out this boat's control panel This is a Sparkman and Stevens uh, 48, and it's one of the best 47. boats you'll 47, 81 model, but immaculate. One of the best boats I've ever seen. So Brian's had a Perkins 4108. He sailed around the world in it numerous times. I'll show you a little trick. He's going to show us a trick. Throughout he pushes a button and it turns into a disco. You can't see it at night. We're throughout the boats. See this here? Yeah, the red light. Yeah, see there? Yeah, night lights. The light floor lights. And what's very sexy is they've got a dimmer on them. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> like I said, it's one of the best buds I've ever seen. How about that? You've never seen that before. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to burst your bubble here, Brian. But we've actually got night lights on our boat. Too. Yeah, but do you got dimmer on them? Hell no. Yeah, here you go. See. <laughs> so Brian's going to help us try and diagnose this starter motor. So we've got to try and pull it apart. This is the top part's called the solenoid, and the bottom part's the starter. And we're going to see how we go. I need a very strong feeling that that shouldn't touch that. Shouldn't touch. So I think we found a little bit of a problem here. This thread, which was damaged, has led us to uncover the back of this screw, or this bolt, and there's an area here which has been ground down, and we think that's been touching against here. Now originally this bolt, we assume, had a raised rib on this side, that way which is how it should be, but somehow it's been wearing down and it's worn that nib all the way down. So we're gonna reverse the bolt, put it back in so it's as it was. We still have an issue of the thread not being long enough, but we may be able to make the packing nut a little bit thinner or somewhere so we can maybe get a little bit of thread to tighten up our terminals on or even crimp them together possibly you mentioned Brian that's an option too right so we've just undone the end cap I'm working on this solenoid casing area I've sandpapered this zone here and this area where the crack is you can probably see the crack there I've basically sandpapered it up I'm gonna make it a bit more I'm gonna I'm gonna sand it a little better I'm going to squeeze some epoxy in there and then do a little bandage piece over the top with epoxy two part here. Um, this is pretty good for plastic. You can use it on steel, you can use it on lots of things. You just mix it up together. But while I'm doing this, Brian's just popped the end cap off the starter motor to see the condition of the brushes inside. So he reckons that the brushes look okay. Mm, plenty of meat on them. Is this the commutator? Yeah. That's the commutator and these are the brushes here. I'm into it. A couple of frayed little wires here but it uh, should be okay, they are massively over-engineered. So you're pretty confident that the problem is not in this part of it here, the problem was mostly more than likely in the solenoid area. Yeah, if you're looking for, you know, from my point of view, you look at where, what looks wrong, nut doesn't look wrong, but this looks massively wrong. Wrong from the outside, wrong that it was loose, and wrong from where it's been touching on the inside. So my thoughts are that this is where your problem was. Because I can't see a problem in there, that's pretty normal. This is the thing about the cruising community. Oh, up until yesterday, Arvo, we were prepared to go all the way to Porta Plata, get taxis, try and find someone who knew what they were doing. We would have got to the place, if with any luck, by eight o'clock this morning. We would have had to wait for someone to turn up and then said, look, we would have had to beg them to try and look at this if they even were interested. Um, luckily we met Brian, fellow Aussie cruiser, he's been there done that, he's got plenty of stories. We should interview him about his life another time but for now he's, he's helping us with this and um, yeah we're pretty stoked. I'm pretty glad we met this old character. <laughs> in his day. He's still in his prime he says. Brian, thank you buddy. You're welcome. I owe this oh, man a few beers. <laughs> Alright. Moment of truth. I've put it all back together. I've even gone a little bit gung-ho and have put the epoxy on top of the bolt because I'm pretty confident this is going to work. We've eliminated all the other things it could be. There's a small chance that when we go to start it, the problem's still there. If that's the case, it's going to be in the armature of the actual starter motor itself. But when we pull that starter motor apart, Brian seems to think all that was in perfect condition. So he didn't have any reason to believe that's the case. He said, put it all back together the way you had it clean it all up, do it properly, and he goes, it'll start. I'm sure it will, and this is it. Yeah, is Brian, it. <laughs> thank you, buddy, you're a legend. What'll happen is, if everything goes good, we'll turn the key to the on position. We'll get two red lights in the alarm for the water and oil alarm. I have to reconnect them as well, so there's a small chance that they may not be working, but I'm hoping they do. In a perfect world, we'll turn the key, two lights and an alarm, and then bang, it should start. Here we go. I'm actually crapping my pants right now. You probably didn't know that crappy was a nautical term. Back in the day, to a British sailor, a Frenchman was General Crapeau, pronounced crapeau. Crapeau is French for toad. Everything a Frenchman said was crapeau, rubbish, or gibberish. Yes! Oh my god, we did it! We freaking did it! Yeah! Woo! Yes! Woo! <laughs> yes! Yet another 
thing that you oh. have amazingly managed to fix. You're a good human. Wow, that's an emotional roller coaster. Working on boats is insane. Pretty smoky. Is it? Yeah, it's because it hasn't been started for three days. That's nothing. Okay. That's, that's fine. You got a bit of white smoke? That's fine. That'll do it. Check out my windscreen behind you too. That's what I was working on. What the hell is that thing? Yeah, funnels wind. I think I've got You're it wrong, but it's better than what it was yesterday. That was my project, and I also de-rusted the stanchions. Yep, we're good. We're good now. Mm -hmm. We're ready to go. We're ready to. We, we can make this passage on Tuesday, which is scary. It's a long passage, and it's a hundred miles of hugging a coastline, which you, you have to do at night to make advantage of the light winds. But you'll hear more of that as we go through it. Um, I wanted the boat to be perfect before we left. I didn't want to have anything at all that I was sus on. It's got to be perfect, otherwise you're not going to trust it. And the starter motor happening was basically a way of the universe saying, if you want to cross oceans with this, if you haven't got a starter motor, you're screwed. So it's a way of, of the world just saying, hey mate, you need to not only sort the one you've got out, you need to organise a spare and you need to know how to fit it yourself if you have to. So doing it yourself you'll save money but you'll gain so much more than money you'll just you'll have the knowledge and next time it happens you'll be onto it and um i hope i never have to do that out at sea that'd be a nightmare having to pull the starter out in big seas but you've got to do what you got to do to get through whatever situation you're in Thank you to all you guys for watching these videos. Yeah. We really, really appreciate it. Cool. Especially all the people who've been watching us from the beginning and the mass amount of people that just came on board last week. We're stoked. Thank you for all the comments and all the love. And we hope you yeah. like this video. So Yeah, we want to keep doing this and we want to grow this. So spread the word and leave comments. And, and tell and us what you want to see. Yeah, for sure. As well. So thanks. If you like the video, subscribe, comment below, and we'll see you next time. Hey, we're going to Puerto Rico soon. <laughs> Dominican Republic, you're a 10 out of 10 in my books though. Thanks for watching, legends. Cheers, until next time. Adios.